everything exists in China, all cultures, including Judaism, including Islam, have all come to China and they've all been molded huh, in this big uh, Chinese cosmology that, that encompasses everything, you know, because that's, the, that's the, the funny thing about this Tao and this Yin and this Yang. You know, it has no borders. There's no in and out. It's, it makes everything sacred. Right? So it's, it's, it, you can expand it everywhere. A anything can find its place within this framework. So all foreign religions, if they want, of course our Catholic missionaries didn't want that, right? but they, they could, of course. The Chinese emperor was ready to, to give them a small place in the palace where they could build a church next to the Buddhists, next to the Taoists, next to whoever was it. Huh? But, but that, of course, we didn't want because uh, we wanted to be uh, soul recognized. Okay, we, we, we're not going to that now. Huh? But uh, there's a place for there's a place for 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 for, for, for everything. It it it, uh, <coughs> it it brings everything in its uh, in its uh, in its uh, big big mo So um, when I was a child. My parents used to tell me why we were not Catholic, but we, why we were Protestant. And that was something exclusive, you know? That is the truth, the truth and, and our belief, that is exclusive. And certainly, you couldn't be a Protestant and a Catholic at the same time, although I was very tempted when I was a young guy, because I, I loved Mass, you know, I thought it was beautiful. And, and, uh, but uh, my parents, who were very liberal, I mean, that was really too much for them. You know? And uh, uh, when I came to China, I mean, I, I found that I was trained as a Taoist master for, for seven years. And uh, they never asked me, my master never asked me to renounce to my faith. They assumed that as I was brought up a Protestant, I would remain a Protestant. And they saw no, I was trained as a, as a Taoist master. I was initiated in all the secrets, in all the secret meditation in all, all the, the things that you only get to know when you really serve your master for a long time. And, uh, but they never asked me to renounce to my faith. They found that was none of their business and uh, my private thing. And uh, was, uh, there was nothing incompatible uh, by being a Christian and a Taoist at the same time. And then in the city where I lived in southern Taiwan, because Taiwan is a very, very, very special place, you know. All this destruction we have talked about did not happen so much in Taiwan. So it was spared. So, so, so the, the traditional society could evolve more harmoniously to, to a modern society without these, these, these big traumatisms that have, have hit mainland China. Of course, Hong Kong uh, did not go through too, but it was traumatized by British colonialism. Very, very heavily so. Huh? But uh, uh, that, that was, that was, uh, but uh, so that was tra traditional society. And I, I, I saw that in the city where I lived in Thailand, there were about 100 temples, and some were Buddhist, and some were Taoist, and there were also mosques, of course. And there were, of course, churches, because uh, the uh, Presbyterian Church of Scotland had. Uh, sent their missionaries at the end of the 19th century and uh, they had built hospitals and uh, Christian schools and uh, Christian cemeteries and whatever you have. Well, there was no religious conflict at all. There was a society that for hundreds of years different religions had lived side by side without any major conflict and there was not, like we have in Europe, you know, a Catholic quarter and a Protestant quarter and then a Jew Jewish quarter there, you know, segregation. Didn't exist. And later in Beijing, I studied Beijing, there you had a huge city and there were even more religions. And they just, for centuries, lived peacefully side by side. Because they have an other notion of what we call orthodoxy. For us, orthodoxy is something exclusive. If you're an Orthodox Jew, I mean, you stick to that, and all the others is, don't want that. But in China, I can tell you by, by authority, I mean, Orthodoxy is when everybody agrees that that is true, then it's Orthodoxy. Huh? 
when there is a general consensus, then it's orthodox. And when you have your own opinion, that's not orthodox. You know? So it's, 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 it's quite the opposite. Huh? It's, China is inclusive, and its cosmology and its philosophy is also inclusive. So what did that mean? Did that, of course, it's a beautiful idea, but did that mean something really? It did. Because when I studied Beijing, in the ruins of all these temples, I tried to dig out all these old steely inscriptions and publish them. You know, Chinese uh, temples have inscriptions, you know, with steles, where they say when the temple was founded and who gave money and why and so on. Huh? So these are very precious documents. And I found steely inscriptions, for instance, in one of the major Taoist monasteries, still exists, the Bai Yunquan, the White Cloud Monastery. There's a steely inscription of about 150 years ago. You know what it says? It says, we faithful, not the monks themselves, but people who, who were faithful, that they adhere to the temple, when they, we have created an association in order to worship the Buddhist deity, Kuan Yin, at the adjacent Buddhist monastery. And why we do that? Because we want to show our friendship and our, our, our uh, good neighborhood thing. When this deity has her birthday, we want to go and play theater and bring offerings. So everybody gives money and then we have this association to do that. Imagine, imagine that the, the Mormon church in Utah ha has a special chapter in order to collect funds to help the Catholic church next door to embellish itself. You know, it, it's about that, you know. But it happened. It, it can happen. It's not necessary that people always fight. And uh, uh, China had this, for centuries, uh, this kind of, of religious peace because of their definition of what is orthodox. That is something that everybody shares. 